ultrasound guided subacromial injection and the posterior approach of the intraarticular injection are the most common pain intervention in chronic shoulder pain. In the early era of ultrasound guided shoulder pain intervention, the patients sit on the stool and receive the simple dressing preparation. The doctor did not wear aseptic gloves and loved the non-touch technique. They showed it off and it was considered safe as far as they put the needle away from the ultrasound probe, whatever the probe condition was. For the intraarticular injection, they loved to use the posterior approach with simple, their traditional way. They did not care about their ergonomics, maintaining awkward posture. I believe many doctors are so stubborn and would not change their way even today. They still insist on the non-touch technique and localize their interest only in the local anatomy of the target zone. However, there are more chances of advancement if you are generous to take bits of knowledge and seek to find many better ways. I am sure expanding our spectrum by studying the boundary of various bursa would contribute to our better decision making. Furthermore, understanding the communication between the subtendinous bursa of the subscapularis and intraarticular space would give us an insight into the pain generator and help to select the nice one among various procedures. The MRI image is a great way to expand our 3D understanding of each structure. For example, the coracobrachial bursa and subtendinous bursa of subscapularis are communicated in this case. So, the fluid distension of coracobrachial bursa is not the primary pathology but the secondary from intraarticular infusion. What is the advantage of learning bursal boundaries? The subacromial bursal space covers a broad area and can deliver the drugs to the local area of supraspinatus and posterior surface of cracohumeral ligament. But it could not deliver medicine to the infraspinatus and subscapularis. So you could not expect getting better if you choose a subacromial bursa injection for the infraspinatus and subscapularis pathology. Thus, subacromial injection help for the treatment of adhesive capsulitis, the bursa contact with the coracohumeral ligament, and it is the primary pathologic site of adhesive capsulitis. So, the subacromial injection is logical to relieve pain as the intraarticular injection does. How about double target? Does it facilitate a treatment? Of course, I believe so. I perform subacromial and intraarticular injection in the blink of an eye simultaneously in adhesive capsulitis. Today, I show an evidence. If the needle tip is placed in the correct space, you don't feel any resistance. Mission completed. Thank you for watching. See you in the following videos.